What up guys, Kashi here, and welcome to another episode of Ignition and Beyond. In the last episode, we looked at how return fuel systems work. But around 20 so years ago, most car manufacturers began switching from the traditional return fuel systems to return less fuel systems instead. In this episode, we're going to take a look at why manufacturers made the switch to returnless fuel systems and then we're going to take a look at how these systems work. Let's get into it. Between 1993 and 2004, Honda, Toyota, GM, Ford and Chrysler all switched from the traditional return fuel system to returnless fuel systems instead. As the name suggests, returnless fuel systems don't involve fuel returning to your fuel tank from your engine. Now there are two main reasons why this kind of system is beneficial. The first reason is because returnless fuel systems are cheaper for manufacturers to produce because they don't have to spend extra money designing and installing return fuel lines to return from your engine to your fuel tank. And you know, greedy businessmen these days, they want all the extra cash they can get. The second reason is because of everyone's favorite subject, emissions. We already know that your engine generates a lot of heat. As fuel passes by your engine, it absorbs some of that heat and carries it back to your fuel tank. This can cause your liquid fuel in your tank to turn to a gas and that messes with your EVAP system. Your EVAP or evaporative emission control system prevents fuel vapor from escaping your fuel tank. Unfortunately, your EVAP system has a limit. So with a lot of fuel vapor, it can easily overload your EVAP system. Your fuel vapor can then escape your fuel tank and get into your atmosphere. In the early 2000s, national governments really started cracking down on EVAP emissions, forcing many car companies to switch to returnless fuel systems. The way that returnless fuel systems work is by moving your fuel filter, pump, and pressure regulator to inside your fuel tank. So your fuel pump draws in fuel. Along the way, it passes through your fuel filter, which cleans the fuel. Your fuel then enters your pump and then gets pumped out to your pressure regulator. If your fuel pressure regulator detects that your pump is pumping fuel at an excess of pressure, it will reroute some of the excess fuel back into the fuel tank through this bypass valve without the need for a return fuel line. This greatly reduces EVAP emissions as well as the additional cost for a return fuel line. From your fuel tank, your fuel enters your supply fuel line. Some cars have a second fuel filter to further clean the fuel and improve reliability. But other than that, boom, is a direct shot right to your fuel rail. As we saw in the last episode, your fuel rail sits parallel to your engine and it supplies fuel to each of your fuel injectors which squirt fuel into your engine as needed. In a returnless fuel system, your fuel rail also houses your fuel pressure sensor, an electronic device that monitors the pressure inside your fuel rail. If it detects a lack or an excess in pressure, it will tell your fuel injectors and your fuel pump to deliver more or less fuel as needed. So if you own an older car, like say around before 1995, like a 68 Chevelle, a Mazda RX-7, an E30 BMW M3, or my favorite car of all time, the Nissan Skyline R32 GTR, then you're probably dealing with the return fuel system. If you have a car after around 2000-2001, then you probably have a newer returnless system like say in a Dodge Demon, a Nissan 350Z 
or the most legendary, iconic vehicle of all time, the Kia Rondo, with a solid 164 pound-feet of torque, a blistering 162 horsepower to get you from 0 to 60 in just 8.8 .8 seconds. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> because in a returnless fuel system, your fuel pump, fuel filter, and fuel pressure regulator are inside your fuel tank, you have to drop your entire fuel tank just to replace or upgrade any of those integral components. This makes an older return fuel system much easier to work on. But as returnless fuel systems reduce EVAP emissions, are cheaper for manufacturers to produce, and are just overall more efficient, they are what you'll find on almost all production cars today. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like or subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate it, you guys. In the next episode, I'm going to be taking a break on fuel systems altogether, and I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite vehicles of all time, the Nissan S14 Silvia. So as always, if I made any mistakes, feel free to drop a comment below. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.